Now we're going to talk about how we can present data sets. So let's say you go to an ice cream shop and you ask them what their most popular flavor is. Now, because flavors of ice cream have natural categories that they fall into, you know, Rocky Road or Neapolitan or mint chocolate chip or whatever of the 32 flavors that the ice cream shop you happen to, you happen to go to has, there are natural categories that the data falls into and that you can just ask them about and they'll be able to tell you what the most common flavor is, what the most popular flavor is, what the least popular flavor is, whatever they have. There are nice categories built into what we're working with. But let's say instead you want to find out what their average daily revenue is. Well, you can go through their receipts and you can find a whole bunch of numbers. You can get that they made like $478.10 on one day and then $97.15 on another day and then some other measurement on some other and they get just this whole great big jumble of things where you have a pile of numbers to dig through and generally digging through a great big pile of numbers is scary. People don't like doing that. Even people who are good with numbers find that inconvenient and it's not immediately clear what's going on because you don't have those categories built in naturally. You can't just look at that and get some patterns by breaking things down easily when you have so many different things to look at. So this is where we get these ideas called frequency distributions, or essentially what we're doing is using tables and graphs, mostly tables for the exact idea of a frequency distribution, to be able to break down numerical data that doesn't naturally fall into categories in quite the same way as categorical data might so that we can identify some things about it so we can get a nicer representation because that's a lot of what we're talking about here in this section is getting nice representations for our data sets where we call the categories we make classes and these are just numerical groups of things where the frequency is the number of things in any given class and the class width is the size of the class that we're making. And I'll say here that some texts would set this up in terms of wanting you to find a class width for a given number of classes, which leads to some really awful computations for that. Don't make a whole lot of sense to me and are quite annoying. But thankfully this book doesn't do that. I'm the first book I've had that doesn't, and I actually really appreciate it for that. But anyway, let's look at an example here, where what we want to do is construct a frequency distribution for the data of the age of maximum yearly growth for 35 boys, where we get this string of 35 numbers that we're going to be working with here. And I think that pile of numbers kind of illustrates the entire point of this exercise that if someone just looked at you and they threw that set of things at you, you'd say, okay, that's a number of numbers and a whole bunch of them are in the teens, but it's not really obvious what's going on there. It's not really obvious what general tendencies, what sort of patterns you can identify with that. And most people would see that pile of numbers and say, ah, too many numbers in a row. I would like to leave the room, please. So you wouldn't do that. Instead, what you would do is make a frequency distribution, where the type of frequency distribution you'd be making is a table something like this, where the categories are just broken down by year. You don't have those classes broken up into parts. It's just 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then you've got the frequencies. Those are just the number of boys where that happened in each of those given years. So you'd end up with a picture something like that, where from there, you have a much better sense of the situation. You can actually maybe make some interpretations where you can see that the frequencies increase up to a peak at 14, where that's the most common one, the most common age that is, that you get a, what is that we're looking at? Maximum yearly growth, that's really specific, but that's a pattern that you can recognize a lot easier for the fact that this is presented in a much nicer table than 
what you had with that big pile. People generally don't like dealing with, dealing with big piles of numbers. Table is a much cleaner picture. 